Good morning, gentlemen. Today we're talking about HCG, human chorionic and iatrotropin, whether or not you need to use it alongside testosterone replacement therapy in order to maintain fertility or restore it. Um, we're also going to talk about the other options you have available to you, as well as uh, current research and literature and what it has to say about this subject. Um, so we're going to go into some pretty good detail here. This is basically, this video is intended for the individual, probably a young man who wants to get on testosterone replacement, um, needs it, you know, uh, but is concerned about their fertility. They either want to have kids soon or maybe down the line, years down the line, perhaps. A few caveats here. Number one, I'm not a medical professional. Um, there are uh, fertility specialists out there if you need help restoring your fertility you know, increasing fertility or restoring it after androgen use, there are specialists out there who can help you. Um, so don't look for me for that information. Uh, talk to your doctor. And take everything I say here with a grain of salt because uh, I got neurological issues going on. Um, cognition is a little lower and I'm also on medication that can make me a little dopey. So I'm doing the best that I can, but take things with a grain of salt and do your own research, right? Okay, so the basics of testosterone replacement therapy. Does it cause infertility? I want to say yes. The answer to that is yes. I want to say yes because I'll fucking pin all of hands. I want to say yes because it has such a high likelihood of infertility that you need of causing infertility that you need to have a plan if you're getting on testosterone replacement as a young man and you want to have kids down the road. You shouldn't bank on being one of the few people, rare individuals who are able to conceive uh, even when they're on testosterone replacement. So my answer to that is yes. Now, realistically, there are people, and you'll read stories about it, um, where people are on testosterone replacement or androgens, and they are using it as a contraceptive tool, right? Um, but they don't actually use it legitimate contraceptive. They just think they're infertile, they have sex with their girlfriend, and now a girlfriend's pregnant, right? So it does happen. But I want to say yes, that it will make you infertile, um, even though realistically you, there's, a, there's a small possibility it won't because I think you should have a plan in case it does. You don't wanna be a young man who wants to have kids down the road and then down the road you can't have kids because you didn't have a fucking plan. Uh, okay, so what are the basics, right? You get on testosterone replacement therapy, it shuts down your natural production of testosterone and sperm. Um, the two hormones that are responsible for stimulating these processes are LH and FSH. LH is luteinizing hormone, FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. Anybody who knows the basics of the HPTA, the hypothalamus pituitary testicular or gonadal axis, will know what these hormones are. Uh, they work in tandem. They are not separate. You know, it's not, a lot of people think LH produces testosterone, FSH produces sperm. They work in tandem together uh, to increase testosterone production in sperm, spermatogenesis, which is the increase of sperm. Um, so when you get on testosterone replacement therapy, exogenous, these outside source exogenous testosterone injections, um, you in, in short order, these hormones are going to be shut down. So your brain is no longer going to be secreting these hormones. So you're going to have a shutdown of natural production of testosterone and natural production of sperm, which equals high likelihood of infertility, which is why I wanna say yes, it will make you infertile, right? You need to have a plan. Okay, so here's the situation. You're like me, you're a young man. You want to get on testosterone replacement therapy, but you want to have a plan, right? You want to play things smart. You want to know what you're getting into. Um, the wise of you, you have options. What is your first option? Your first option is not using TRT altogether and using instead Clomid or a, another serum like Enclomiphene. I think Enclomiphene is superior to, to Clomid. It's actually one of the ingredients that makes Clomid actually work. It is the ingredient ingredient, it's an isomer, that makes Clomid work, and they've isolated it. Um, it's a little harder to come by, but compounding pharmacies, remote compounding pharmacies, do compound in Um So anyway, you could use Enclomiphene or Clomid, right, as an, an HPTA-supportive monotherapy in order to see if you tolerate it well, because these medications help you produce, uh, increase your natural production of testosterone, as well as increase your uh, potential for uh, your ability to conceive increases fertility. Um, the problem with these drugs are that they're kind of side effect ridden, right? Not a lot of people do well on Clomid. Um, more people do well on Clomiphene than Clomid, but uh, again, it's harder to source. Not a lot of people do well on Clomid, but some people do. And the benefit of Clomid is if you try Clomid out and it actually works for you, which it does for some people, and your testosterone's up, you're feeling great, 
uh, your fertility is certainly going to be up. Um, you have no repercussions, right? Um, if you wanted to hop off. So let's say you use Clomid and you didn't feel well. You had a little bit of insomnia, you're a little bit moody. It just didn't make you feel very good. It didn't give you the benefits you wanted from testosterone replacement therapy or it didn't relieve your low testosterone symptoms. Then you can hop off and you have zero repercussions. Your testosterone will go back to baseline. Um, your fertility will go back to baseline. You're not gonna have this period where your testosterone is lower than it was at baseline and fertility is lower than it was at baseline where you have a recovery period where you feel shittier than when you started or worse than where you started. Um, that's the benefit of Clomid. Basically repercussion free if you wanna hop off as compared to other androgens like when you get on testosterone replacement therapy. So that's Clomid, right? Or, or a serum. Um, it's like the estrogen receptor modulator, Clomid or Enclomid, the most common ones. That's option number two. Okay, so options, uh, option that was option number one. Options two through four are if you want to get on testosterone replacement therapy. The easiest option you have, option two here, let's say option one, let's call option one for TRT, is IVF, in vitro fertilization. This is where you freeze your sperm. Um, and you have it stored at a sperm bank and they pay you, or you pay them a monthly fee to have your, your sperm frozen and stored there until you're ready to have a kid. And then you pay $15,000 per cycle of IVF, um, to try to get your wife or girlfriend or whoever your, your partner pregnant. Um, the upside of this is it's really easy. You just jizz into a cup. Um, downside of this is, is it, it is a little expensive. You got you have a small monthly fee. And then when you are ready to have a kid, it's gonna cost you about $15,000 per cycle to attempt to have or uh, um, conceive you know, a child. Um, so it's expensive, about $15,000 per cycle. And if you fail a cycle of IVF, you have to do another one, that's another 15K. So it's not cheap, um, but it is one of those kind of back, easy back doors. If you're like getting on testosterone replacement therapy, you don't wanna think about anything. Um, you at least have that option where your sperm is frozen um, and you can use it later if you need to. Option two would be the classic gold standard, use HCG, which is an LH analog, and LH stimulates the testo uh, testicles to produce testosterone and sperm, right? It's part of the, 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 the um, duo of LH and FSH. Um, HCG is a, a LH analog, but you can use HCG at 750 IUs per week, split into about three injections, right? Three injections at 250 IUs. So use HCG to maintain fertility alongside testosterone replacement therapy. That's option number two. With everything, there's benefits and drawbacks, right? The benefit of this is you can maintain your fertility. Awesome. Drawback of this is it makes your protocol harder to dial in. Uh, HCG is an estrogenic compound. Some people do just fine on it uh, with testosterone and HCG, no problem. Um, uh, a lot of people need to use an aromatase inhibitor to feel well on it because HCG is very estrogenic. So now you're adding an additional two drugs into your protocol which complicates things and makes takes longer to get dialed in. You might have a higher risk for side effects, um, but that is your other option, right? Option one, IVF. Option two, use HCG at about 750 IUs per week to maintain fertility. Third option, very basic, but it is first line, is to use HCG to restore fertility. So you're on testosterone replacement therapy, you've been on it for years. Now you can use HCG to restore fertility down the line. So when you're ready to have kids, you back off on the dose or maybe completely hop off a testosterone replacement and start blasting HCG um, in order to restore fertility, right? Because it's going to get your nuts back up and running. It's going to bring your, you know, your nuts are atrophied. It's going to bring them back to uh, a restored state where they can produce testosterone. And more importantly, um, it's going to increase spermatogen spermatogenesis. Now, if you're looking for some unofficial uh Clinical data on this, the anabolic doc has a, a presentation on fertility, which I'll link in the description below or up in the corner. Um, he has said before that he's seen with his patients a very high percentage of, a uh, very high success rate in restoring fertility in patients who have, with um, sustained androgen use, so long as they are under, I believe he said 40. Um, that was conservative. I think he actually said 50, but I'm gonna say 40. If you're over 40 and you're trying to have kids, um, the fuck you doing? Uh, but that's, uh, I'm not one to judge, it's person dependent, but he's seen, you know, I believe he said over 90% of people using HCG as a restorative therapy for fertility alone, um, works like magic for some people to increase their fertility. So there's that, right? Anabolic docs, uh, unofficial clinical data, anecdotal data that he's seen. Please watch his fertility presentation. Um, 
it might be of extreme use to you. Okay, so you got that. IVF, use ACG to maintain, use ACG to restore. When you're at the point where you, you know, use ACG to restore, it gets complicated from there, right? So let's take a look at the research. Uh, there is a retrospective study in the Journal of Sex Medicine. It's called The Use of ACG-Based Combination Therapy for the Recovery of Spermatogenesis, Spermatogenesis After Testosterone Use. This is where things get more complicated. This is where you're going past HCG, right? So you have a high likelihood of restoring fertility just using HCG down the road. Um, so that's an option you can use. It's not a guarantee. Um, it's not something you can 100% rely on for sure, but it has a high likelihood. And we're playing a game of likelihood here, like a game of odds. You know, how likely are you going to be able to restore your fertility using these medications down the road? Um, because everything's a gamble. You hop on testosterone replacement therapy, you're risking not being able to have a kid, even with all these options, you know, all of them, you're risking not being able to have a kid. Um, it's, a, it's a game of odds here. Are you willing to take the risk? So the, the study, the retrospective study, the use of HCG-based combination therapy for the recovery of spermatogenesis after testosterone use. Uh, it's a study out of the Journal of Sex Medicine. It's a retrospective study. They took a look at 49 men, N equals 49. Um, at fertility clinics after androgen use. Um, they had azospermia, azospermia or oligospermia, uh, which is uh, decreased motility or decreased sperm count. So essentially they are infertile due to androgen use. They took all 49 patients off of androgens and put them on a restorative fertility restorative uh, protocol of 3,000 IUs of ACG every other day. This is what they did with every patient with either in, uh, clomiphene citrate, tamoxifen, or a common FSH, um, according to physician preference. So every patient, all 49 of them, got 3,000 IUs of HCG every other day. Um, and then depending on the, the preference of the physician, they either got in clomiphene, tamoxifen, or common FSH um, alongside the HCG therapy. With this protocol, 96% of patients regained spermatogenesis with an average uh, time of spermatogenesis, uh, of, excuse me, 96% of patients regain spermatogenesis with this protocol or with these protocols. And the average time to regain that spermatogenesis was 4.6 months. So average time to become fertile again was 4.6 months. And they're defining that basically by sperm count and motility, not necessarily by whether or not they were able to get their wife or girlfriend pregnant. Another study, indications for the use of HCG for the management of infertility in hypogonadal men. Uh, this is a study in 2018 out of the University of Miami Department of Urology. And it basically backs up the claim that yes, you can use these drugs, HCG, and uh, HCG serms, HM, HMG, uh, F, recombinant FSH, etc., et to regain fertility down the road. Now, this is all this is all kind of getting into the esoteric specialist, you know, fertility specialist medication protocols in order to restore fertility. But I'm showing you, basically trying to demonstrate to you that there are options out there down the road, even if HCG alone is not enough to make, uh, restore fertility. And I'm giving you the, the specific um, odds here of being able to restore fertility with these sorts of protocols. We have a you know uh, uh, retrospective study with um, uh, a subject count of 49, right? It's not a whole lot, but it gives you an idea. 96% of these people were uh, able to restore fertility based on metrics of uh, sperm motility and sperm count, okay? So you have a lot of options, and I think you should consider each of them before you get on testosterone replacement therapy, right? You are, I would take it as a yes, you are going to become infertile on testosterone replacement therapy. I would just put that in your head. Realistically, some people don't become infertile, um, a small percentage. Um, so I would plan ahead. Your options, going over them again, right? You got Clomid, monotherapy, instead of testosterone replacement. See how you tolerate it. If you don't tolerate it, you can get off, no repercussions, no recovery period. You go back to baseline. Um, you don't have an impact on your testosterone production or your sperm production, production, spermatogenesis. Then if you get on testosterone replacement therapy, you have the option of IVF, it's expensive, but it's a good back door. You have your sperm frozen. It's always there as an option down the road. You know, you're basically giving yourself some sort of guarantee. It's never a guarantee, right? But you're giving yourself some sort of option for for um, conceiving down the road if you're unable to restore fertility, right? It's like it's a great option to have, even if you use other things like HCG to maintain or restore. So you got IVF as a first option. 
Then you have HCG. Um, usually it's 250 I use three times a week. It just rolls off my tongue. I see it so often to maintain fertility alongside testosterone replacement therapy. Again, this complicates, complicates the protocol. You may, may need to use an aromatase inhibitor, not with everyone. Um, I say it all the time. Everyone's person dependent, you know, um, it's person dependent. Uh, some people do well on HCG with no aromatase inhibitor and uh, fucking getting dialed in on it is a piece of cake. So a lot of people, they have a little bit of trouble with it. So IVF, first option. Second option, use HCG 200, or 750 IUs per week to maintain. Third option, use HCG to retor, restore fertility. So you back off of your testosterone replacement, oh, perhaps 100%, get off testosterone, start blasting HCG in, in order to restore fertility. Then you have other options down the road. You know, you tried all this. You have IVF on the in, in, on the backside, right, as a protection. You got IVF, and you decided not to go with HCG. So now you have the option of using HCG to restore. So you back off of testosterone, use HCG. You're waiting a few months. You can't get your wife pregnant, right, uh, or girlfriend pregnant. I don't care who the fuck we get pregnant. I don't care. Now you have all these other drugs um, that specialists will use in order to help restore. You got clomiphene, tamoxifen, recombinant FSH. Um, you got a high doses of HCG. Here in this study, they use 3,000 IUs of HCG every other day. Now, again, these drugs also have side effects, right? If you're on 3,000 IUs of HCG every other day, that's an estrogenic compound, right? And you have uh, other uh, serums that have their own side effects, certainly clomid, clomiphene. Um, has side effects, but um, these drugs are extremely effective at increasing fertility. So you have that as an option. Um, and again, in this instance with 40, 49 individuals who had infertility due to androgen use, they were able to restore fertility based on the metrics of motility and sperm count um, in 96% of those uh, patients. Um, so overall, you have options, right? It's maintain or restore, maintain, restore. And then there's IVF, right? Intra, intra, uh, in vitro fertilization. But the main options are maintain or restore. And the gold standard, generally speaking, is TRT clinics want to maintain because it's, it's, it seems safer, right? They maintain fertility. Um, but even then, there's not a guarantee of actually maintaining fertility for in the long run. There is some, it's scant, but there is some evidence of the possibility of downregulation of the LH there is some evidence of the of HCG becoming less effective over time. So um, in every instance, it's not a guarantee. So when you get on testosterone replacement therapy, you have to take that into consideration. It's an odds game. If you do IVF and then you also use HCG to um, maintain fertility and then you could possibly use additional drugs down the line if you have trouble regaining fertility, then you're covering all your bases, right? But if you only want to use one um, it's either maintain or restore. You can use HCG at a low dose, 750 I use per week is pretty common to maintain fertility. Otherwise you can use HCG to restore. And then it gets more complicated from there. And basically at that point, if you can't use HCG to restore your fertility uh, with your doctor, uh, then you need to go see a specialist for restoring fertility um, and use other drugs like HCG plus Clomid or HCG plus Clomid, uh, Tamoxifen, recombinant FSH, HMG. It gets complicated. It gets beyond your scope it gets beyond my scope um and you're not you know these aren't drugs you you, you can't you're gonna have low success rate of like of creating your own fertility protocol based off of gray market drugs you order online so see and you can see a specialist for this shit so you don't need to to do that i see a lot of guys who will order these drugs online in order to restore fertility it's like dude they're you can get it from the fucking pharmacy. So just talk to your doctor, but it's restore or maintain. And I think people who have side effects with HCG, um, you're not out of luck. Uh, and if you don't want to use HCG because you just don't want to complicate your protocol, you're not out of luck. I think there's high, um, a lot of evidence that I've just demonstrated um, that shows that down the road, you're able to restore fertility using HCG at a high dose or HCG plus other uh, fertility restorative medications. I think that pretty much covers it. I think it pretty much covered everything there and I don't want to be redundant. So appreciate you guys listening. Have a great day and I'll check you next time. Bye.